So here it is, All-Star Batman and Robin, The Boy Wonder, Issue 9, by Frank Miller and Jim Lee, with Scott Williams and Alex Sinclair. This is the penultimate issue of the series, and when we get to Issue 10, you'll see a, a pretty likely reason of why it was canceled. And the cover is uh, bathed in green because... Um, this is the issue where Batman has his clash with the Green Lantern, which was teased in the previous issue, and we're in medias res. Batman is, uh, has painted himself yellow uh, to render uh, Green Lantern's powers inert. The Silver Age Green Lantern, the one that you know Frank Miller was a fan of uh, with uh, John Broom writing and amazing Gil Kane art, uh, Gil Kane, which, you know, was a formative artistic influence on Frank Miller. Uh, the color yellow was the Green Lantern's kryptonite. Um, by this point, that had been written out of the character. But again, Frank Miller's generation, uh, you know, somebody like uh, Grant Morrison or whoever, they, uh, Alan Moore, they, they really like that, uh, to employ that sort of, that yellow weakness that, um, that Green Lantern has. Uh, it's it's sort of the one that that's you know stuck and, and makes sense to them even though it hasn't been in the comics for some time and since this is sort of like a prequel story since this uh, you know takes place in in the early days of the Justice League and and Batman it's it's okay to have a weakness that that might have been you know written out of the modern comics because this this is supposed to sort of predate all of that now and you'll notice as we go on this comic this issue, has a higher panel count and a higher word count than, than any issue up to this point. And it's a very lively issue. It's fun, it's funny. Maybe Miller is reacting to criticism that he's gotten, maybe uh, criticism from, from fandom and from the, the comics press, maybe criticism from, from editorial, maybe some editorial suggestions, or maybe this is you know just where his story is going. You sort of start out with, Tierce writing, few words, big huge panels, uh, get the get the reader in a sort of rhythm, and then bam, you hit him with bop, 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 bam, 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 panels and 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 verbiage. Now Robin is Robin. He's got his full you know Robin costume. Um, I'm assuming this series was planned to be 12 issues, just like All Star Superman. So it's issue nine. We are getting close. To the grand finale, maybe maybe if it, if it were intended to be a twelve issue series, maybe issue twelve would be double sized or whatever. Um, I I would love to see how uh, you know Frank and Jim were going to tie all this together. And again, uh, to me, endings are so important in stories and in comics. You know, up until the Frank Miller era of you know Dark Knight Returns, it was very rare that these superhero stories got any kind of like definitive ending. And so that's sort of the advantage that modern comics have over, you know, the, the the comics created by, you know, Jack Kirby's generation, Steve Ditko's generation, is that very rarely were they afforded the opportunity to end their stories. And as a result, the ending of a story helps you kind of understand what the whole fucking thing was about in the first place. And so since this doesn't have an ending, we'll never know for sure what this whole thing is about. Maybe it's a big jumble of bullshit, maybe, you know, Frank is just vamping the entire time. Maybe he's just, you know, writing a check uh, with his mouth that his ass can't cash. Maybe he's leading us in this and, and that having it end prematurely worked out the best for him because he never has to like get to the ending and, and, and show you that there was no plan whatsoever. Maybe that's the case or maybe this is all part of, you know, a grand design and maybe this is all leading someplace completely unexpected, completely exciting I, I I wouldn't doubt that because it's Frank Miller. He's done it before. He 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 knows his way around a comic book. And maybe someday we'll we'll get to see that finale. You know, mostly taking up the yellow. So uh, Robin has at Batman's uh, orders has painted this entire room yellow. Batman's safe house, and and they painted themselves yellow. And they're drinking fresh squeezed lemonade. A nice little touch. Batman and Green Lantern are having their conversation. Green Lantern is sort of speaking for the Justice League and having a conversation that gets quoted in Dark Knight Returns, a conversation about, um, you, know, Bat you know, them telling Batman that he's crazy and that he's going to 
uh, he's going to ruin it for everybody and that he needs to reel it in. And Batman knows the Justice League and all of their secrets and they don't know shit about him because he's just that much smarter than them. And, and you know, reinforcing things that, that were sort of stated in the previous issue, Green Lantern has this ring. This ring is all powerful. It can do anything he can Im imagine. The only problem is, uh, in, in Batman's opinion, Green Lantern has no imagination and that uh, Batman could change the world with that ring and Green Lantern just makes, you know, giant uh, brooms and giant egg beaters. Now, what Batman describes that he would do with that ring is, um, you know, sort of this, you know, totalitarian uh, dream of his, you know, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, military conquest would basically be what he would do with it, uh, you know, a new um, Alexander the Great or a new uh, Genghis Khan. And he says the quote that's in Dark Knight Returns, of course we're criminals, we've always been criminals, we have to be criminals. This sets off the Green Lantern. You son of a bitch, you'll ruin everything. You'll get us all killed. You son of a bitch. And he starts punching Batman. And you get the sense that Batman's enjoying it. Green Lantern makes, you know, his big, uh, you know, solid accusation that you uh, kidnapped Dick Grayson and, you know, made him into your, your teenage sidekick. And so then Batman start and, and uh, Robin start doing a number on on Green Lantern and tell him, hey, that's not, that's not Dick Grayson. And he comes up with a little story about it. And then we, we get this flashback to Dick Grayson making a public appearance and saying, oh yeah, Batman's an okay guy and this and that. It's got Green Lantern scratching his head, but he still doesn't buy it. And then Robin says, he's got a point. Maybe he's right. Maybe I am Dick Grayson. Don't try to confuse me, damn it. So again, uh, you know, uh, comedy going on, uh, going on in here. This this mix of uh, you know the light and the dark. They're you know goofing on Green Lantern, calling him a rube. I, I think the green and yellow color scheme it's it's working you know really nicely here. Give gives it you know a, a graphic. We saw like a red Batman under the Hunter's Moon a couple issues ago. Now we're seeing a yellow Batman, and it is you know. Frank Miller grew up with old school Batman. He's a little bit too young to have grown up with, you know, Batman and his multicolored suits, but that stuff was being reprinted in the 60s and 70s. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure that, you know, Frank's kind of doing a riff on that, this sort of multicolor Batman. Ever since Dark Knight Returns and Batman Year One, I feel like Frank Miller got that that version of Batman out of his system, this sort of you know, primal Batman. He's done with that. Now, He want, since then, he's sort of moved on to, he wants to do his version of Silver Age comics. He wants to do his version of the Justice League and this, you know, flamboyant DC universe, this colorful DC universe. And I, and I see this series as a continuation of that. But he also understands the expectations of his fan base, his readership, and, and, and maybe, you know, his own personal interests. Maybe he still knows that he has to inject a little bit of that you know, grim and gritty 80s Batman, but I feel like his heart is in this stuff. He wants to be doing gonzo uh, comics. And Batman starts to tell his, like, this bullshit story of how this kid isn't Dick Grayson and that he found him while he was traveling the world and stuff. Almost like, you know, Professor X when he's recruiting uh, the X-Men. But then he's like, nah, forget it. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that to you, you know. You wear the tights. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit respect of respect. I'm not going to lay that big whopper on you. And he talks about how you wear the tights, you know, that, that, and that, that counts for something. You wear the tights. And so Batman, for all his disagreements with the Justice League, he does uh, respect them as sort of, you know, fellow travelers, that they, they're, they're part of this uh, fraternity, this small fraternity of, of people who wear the tights. And the tights are, are the emblem of this mission that they're on. And he talks about Robin and his fast hands, and his hands are so fast, because uh, Robin, he's kind of pushing Robin, you know, when they call uh, Green Lantern a rube, they're pushing, he's pushing Robin as this sort of like circus kid who, uh, you know, a carny and is uh, full of, uh, you know, full of scams and tricks, and he, you know, pickpockets the Green Lantern. He, he steals the Green Lantern's ring. Uh, you know, the sort of, you know, this solemn, you know, this thing that's sort of central to his identity. And now he's fighting to get it back. I said, give me that ring, you little snot. Warned you, it's your funeral. And now 
we get Robin unleashed and he's uh, doing his acrobatic tricks, dancing rings around uh, Green Lantern. Uh, he takes the ring, sticks it in one of the little capsules on the utility belt. Batman is, is uh, you know, admiring all this, loving every minute of, of watching his uh, protege in action. And uh, little Robin mops the floor with Hal Jordan. But he takes it too far. Uh, Robin's got a lot of anger in him. He just lost his parents. A karate chop to Green Lantern's throat. And now things aren't so funny. Batman grabs Robin throws him, punches him, and says, you know, we got, we got to save this guy's life. Green Lantern's dying, and the last thing we need is a corpse on our hands. When I see a scene like this in this comic, um, again, like, you, you try not to read too much into the uh, sort of um, biography of the creators of a comic. You know, like, they, they just create a comic, and whatever happens in there, it's where their imagination goes. But... Just looking at, you know, the, the body of work and this series in particular, um, I feel that like what we're seeing here is a creator working through some sort of personal trauma. I'm not sure exactly, you know, what, what for, but if it feels, it feels more, it, it feels less and less like a genre exercise or a gonzo comic and, and more like, you know, working through some issues and not not necessarily working through those issues in a way that that the readers can identify with or or that is helpful to readers but more um you know just like a a personal exercise on the part of uh you know the creator of the comic to just sort of you know work through some some you know personal issues some personal demons some personal trauma perhaps again who the fuck knows? This is just, uh, this is just, you know, it, it, in this particular issue, it's hard. Issue after issue of violent abuse, uh, it's, it's hard not to start making some kind of inferences from it. Who knows? Just, just, you know, this is just, um, in terms of literary criticism, it's hard not to sort of go there just because it's so relentless and omnipresent. Now again, you know, just sort of reverse engineering this, it's like you're telling a story about two characters who, you know, had sort of this like ultimate childhood trauma of of losing a parent losing their parents to a violent murder um, you know, at an early age. So maybe this is just a you know, just a continuation of that of that, you know, that line of thought of, you know, what, what form might that, that trauma take. But this, you know, there's, there's, you know, we're certainly seeing, we're seeing something enacted here. Again, it's a Batman story. So we're reading about Batman and Robin and nothing more. To do this delicate operation, this, you know, tracheotomy or whatever, um, you know, he needs to take his hood off. This is the weirdest time to find out that Batman is Bruce Wayne. So, yep, he's finding out that Batman is Bruce Wayne. I thought Maybe that, you know, it, it was only this moment that I realized, oh, I guess he didn't know that. I, I thought maybe he did know that, but it checks out. It, it follows. He's only seen him in costume as Batman. And it's, you know, it's an interesting way of sort of like, okay, the fun's over. Now things are getting super serious. And sort of seeing, you know, with, uh, you know, his uh, sort of yellow paint, five o'clock shadow. And, um, you know, just, just from the standpoint of, of, you know, page design and stuff, it's, it's, um, it was pretty strong, and and so he does the the combat surgery uh, to to save Green Lantern's life, and now it's not so fun anymore. And uh, the sky is crying, and they're out there, and uh, you know Robin, you know, can't believe that he you know just almost killed a guy. The, the yellow paint's being washed off. The the you know that we're back to the grim and gritty. We're back to the darkness, and. Uh, Robin's beating himself up in his internal monologue, and then Batman's beating himself up in his internal monologue. And they go, and we get another one of those sort of, you know, Frank Miller flourishes of, uh, you know, like a car driving by and then some wildlife jumping around. This time it's deer. And they stop, and me, I pray for a second chance, a fresh start. Find them. Say goodbye. And Robin walks out to his parents' Uh, gravestone, and he punches the stone a couple times. Looks like he gets some cracks in it. 
Again, this is, this is the trauma that the characters are working through. He mourns lives lost, including our own. So again, back, back to this sort of uh, you know, original sin of the you know, Batman and Robin myth, this original murder, uh, the, the, murder the murders that unite these two. Uh, they both, you know, lost their parents at, at gunpoint, uh, you know, at, at an early age, and this unites them, and, and that, that they have to um, put the pieces back together in this new life that they're part of. And there, there's a lot here in this, you know, issue of, of a superhero comic. One more issue to go. And oddly enough, all the stuff that's happened up to this point, okay, we can deal with it. Issue 10 is a bridge too far, and uh, we'll talk about that one next time. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. Both of those books are available for pre-order by following the pre-order link in the show notes below. I'll see you next time.